Let me set the scene for you. It's Simon, the Pharisee's house. It's a wonderful evening, and he's invited all of his Pharisee friends in for a meal. And lo and behold, he's also invited Jesus, who has accepted, of course, to come and eat dinner at Simon's house. It's a big to-do, right? It's a place where they're all going to gather. And of course, they invited Jesus just for conversation, not to trap him in anything or in any way, right? It's just dinner with a bunch of important people in town to have an important discussion about life and love and how we're supposed to follow God. And then in comes this woman, right? Can you imagine it? They're sitting there having dinner. Well, actually, they're more reclining, right? They're laying on the floor or they're sitting on their mats at their very short table. And they're having dinner. And in walks a woman. Not only that, but a woman who is a... She's a sinner. Ooh. And of course, we all know what she did, right? The text doesn't say that, by the way. We have no clue what she did. All we know is that she was a sinner and that the Pharisees and everyone sitting at the table knew that she had done something wrong that was sinful. And we assume that she was a prostitute, but we can't assume that because it doesn't tell us what her sin was. It just says that she was a sinner. And she comes in and it's more than just an intrusion because, number one, she's a woman in the midst of Pharisees. That's just unacceptable. And on top of that, she's a sinful woman, which makes it that much even more unacceptable that she has barged into the middle of this dinner, which is very important. But here she is, this woman, standing over Jesus and weeping uncontrollably. And she cleans his feet with her tears, and she dries her feet with her hair, and Simon thinking to himself, why doesn't Jesus do something? So Jesus asked Simon a question. Simon, if two people were in debt to one person and one owed the person 500 denarii and the other person owed them 50 denarii, and neither one of them could pay and the man that was owed the money said, both of your debts have been canceled. Who would love the man more? I love the answer here. Simon says, you have to think about it for a moment, probably first. And just so you know, a denarii is a day's wage. Right? So one day's wage, one person got canceled 50 days wage, and another person over a year's. You don't really need to know that, right? The easy math is 550. One debt is 10 times the other one. It's pretty simple math, actually. We can all do that in our heads, I'm sure. So one of them had a ten times greater debt than the other. And Simon has to think about it for a moment. He goes, well, I suppose the one who had the greater debt. Really, you suppose. These two men just had their debt canceled by the man that they owed money to. And you suppose the one who had a ten times greater debt would love the man more. You're not certain of that? You suppose the one with the greater debt would love him more. And let me ask you something else, Simon. I've been here for a while now, and this woman came into the midst of our, of our gathering, but you didn't give me anything to wash my feet with. Not that Simon, of course, would have been expected to cry onto Jesus' feet and to clean them with his tears and to dry Jesus' feet with his hair. That's not expected. But Simon, as the host of a party, should have had someone at the door to wash the feet of his guests. That was acceptable and what was expected when a person entered the house of someone having a dinner party. And he would have anointed him and given him a kiss, a welcoming kiss. But Simon did none of this. This woman came in and cried over Jesus. And why? Why did this happen? You see, I believe that Jesus met this woman before. Because it says in our text that Jesus was invited to Simon's house, the Pharisee, to have dinner with them, the Pharisees. And this woman discovered where he was eating, so she went and took an expensive jar of perfume with her. 
And Simon turned her audacious rendering of grace unto him back on Simon who didn't even do what was expected of a host when Jesus entered his house. Because is it easier to say your sins are forgiven or to love the one that no one else loves? See, I believe that Jesus met this woman earlier in the day and told her then that her sins were forgiven, right? We read this part in the passage where it says, then Jesus turned to her, right? When she first gets encountered with Jesus, She's crying on his feet and dries it with her hair and anoints his feet with oil and keeps kissing him. And Jesus talks to Simon about how her sins were forgiven. And then at the end, he turns to her and he says, your sins are forgiven. And we read that as a present tense kind of thing, right? We hear that as we hear it every Sunday morning as with the absolution of sins, that your sins are forgiven. From here forward, it's something that I'm doing right now, forgiving your sins. The tense of this is not clear. I believe Jesus met her earlier and told her before that her sins were forgiven, and because of that, she was so overcome with joy and the graciousness of God that she had to outpour that emotion onto something. And when she discovered where Jesus was, she went and she wept over Him because she couldn't get it. She had to be told again. Have you ever gotten news so good that the first time you heard it, you really didn't think that it was true? And you had to be told it again? And maybe again? See, this woman had her sins forgiven. And Jesus even says... Turning towards the woman, he said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no kiss. You did not anoint. Therefore I tell you, her sins, which were many, have been forgiven. And she had such an outpouring of grace that she had to go find him to show him exactly what it meant to her that he had forgiven her sins. Simon still didn't get it. Because to the one who's the one who has been shown great love will show great love. But the one to whom little is forgiven loves little. Or to those that don't understand that they need forgiveness. Simon didn't understand that he needed forgiveness. And I wonder where we're at in this story. Have you ever been forgiven so much sin that you went back to Jesus and wept over his feet? Or do we feel like we're Simon and we don't really need to be forgiven of anything at all? When we realize that we're Simon, that's when it hits us. That we're not really Simon, but we're the woman. Because Jesus has forgiven us completely and moved us into a new life because that forgiveness is everything. Because it frees us from whatever we can hold, what, would have, what we have been holding on to or what has been holding on to us. And we're freed to unabashedly and unashamedly cry on Jesus' feet and show Him exactly how much we love Him. Because exactly He loved us more than we could ever possibly imagine. So realize that everything that you think is holding you back can be laid right here and can be taken away because that's exactly what Jesus came to do to set you completely free 
so that you can go and tell everyone else in the world exactly how much Jesus loves them.